in this this conversation following the the uh, huge news earlier this week of the um, dismissal and appeal of the kind of applications to convert the old Royal High School or Parliament House on Colton Hill into a kind of a luxury hotel. My name is Terry Laventhal. I'm the director of the Coburn Association and kind of with me are our chairman, Professor Cliff Haig. Um, and Willie Gray Muir, who is the chairman of the Royal High School Preservation Trust, uh, who attended the public inquiry, as did, as did we kind of objecting to the, the proposed hotel scheme. Um, and when we kind of launched the, the news of that kind of on social media and through our kind of press contacts, um, there was a huge interest in the decision. But there was also a question that was beginning to kind of emerge as we were beginning to see, well, what next? What happens now? So it won't be a luxury hotel. What will happen to the Royal High School going forward? So um, with, without any, any further for me is, is, I guess, if I can hand over to um, Professor Haig, first of all, and then Willie really did to first of all give your reflections upon the decisions, um, and then ask the question, what next, or perhaps what's next um, to this kind of process? Okay, thank you, Terry, and uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, uh, Facebook um, live conversation, uh, and particularly welcome to uh, Mr. Gray Muir, who's joined us this morning. So I wonder if we could start off, please, Willie, by just asking, just what is the Royal High School Preservation Trust? Well, it, uh, it was founded by, uh, well, I founded it um, in 2015, after the um, AHSS meeting, um, really on the basis that having seen the hotel proposals for the first time in the flesh, um, was absolutely appalled by what was being proposed. Um, it came about really because we had, uh, I, I um, was then a trustee of the Edinburgh World Heritage Trust um, and uh, through that had got contact in the world of music and uh, in the world of conservation and we felt that there must be a better answer than that and felt that positive action in terms of putting forward an alternative scheme um, would speak a lot more loudly than merely throwing brickbats from the sidelines. So with the back of that, we were very lucky in getting the support of Dunard Fund um, to, promote the, um, uh, to promote the proposal. Um, we approached St Mary's Music School, who we happened to know um, were looking to uh, create a new concert hall and fundraise to expand. Um, really to see if we could make something work. And it all gelled just remarkably well. It all came together, fitting a relatively small music school into a relatively small school building. Um, the cultural value of what was being proposed seemed very obvious. And also the fact that we had a very, a very generous and a very willing funder in Dunard Fund, um, which supports um, both uh, the preservation of important buildings in Scotland um, but also um, has been a very long-term supporter of uh, music in Scotland. So how did you feel when we heard the outcome earlier this week at the public inquiry? Well, I think relieved. And, you know, the, the funny thing about it, of course, was is the shock we all felt when we saw those early images in 2015. Um, you know, it seemed so obvious. How could you possibly say that putting these very large wings on either side uh, of a building whose merit relies significantly on its setting uh, could be acceptable. And I think in a way, as we got into very detailed arguments uh, about the technicalities uh, of um, heritage legislation and of uh, economic values and of the details of architecture of what was proposed, it was quite easy to forget that very basic fact that if when you're walking past this incredibly important building, you couldn't see it, you had fundamentally damaged it and its setting. Um, and I thought the, the report was very, very clear in that. Um, it was a very calm report um, and it merely came to the absolute downright conclusion that putting these large wings on either side of the building was unacceptable. Um, and that will forever more now define how we look at that building. I think it's a very, very important chapter uh, in, in the, the, the history of this building. Yeah, what struck me reading the report was um, yeah, how, how extensive it was, for one thing, um, and how, how many details it picked up. I mean, I, I 
I was fortunate enough not to sit through the public inquiry. <laughs> Terry represented us there, uh, but but also it seems that it's it's kind of really defined um, quite unambiguously now what can and cannot be done in relation to that site, and uh, other things that you feel really stand out from those in terms of um, things to do or or prohibitions on what cannot be done. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we now, when uh, as a as a community, we are never going to know more about this building and the importance of building this building than we do now. Um, so uh, it's an hugely important decision point. It's also obviously um, become a building whose importance has been magnified by um, the amount of public interest that's been in it. So I think the critical thing that comes out of this is that. A, the process, which was a slightly, it was a very well-intentioned process that the council started in 2009. It was really despairing of the inertia that there'd been and saying, come on, we must be able to do something um, more valuable with this incredible building than has been done to date. Um, they tried hard, but they were caught by, I think, slightly unrealistic expectations about what it could do. And I think the one thing that struck me the more I got to know this building is quite how difficult it is because it has this enormous physical presence because of its location and because of its very sculptural form, but it's relatively small inside. We now know very clearly that you can't build um, significant buildings around it and hope to keep its, uh, its importance. And we also know that um, the accessibility issues within it are extremely challenging. Now, these are all things that have been uh, discovered through many small projects that have been, and, you know, uh, the Photographic Museum is one, there's been a number of other, other initiatives to do this, which actually finally come against these very real um, practical um, barriers to actually making a good new use for it. Um, you know, so I hope now what we can do is we can say, right, we know the parameters, we know um, how important this building is, let's now once and for all find, well, maybe not once and for all, but for our own times, find a suitable use for this building. Of course, um, we're all aware that uh, some years ago, I think 2017, a planning permission was given for the music school. Uh, to, to move in there, and you've already mentioned a little bit about that. So where does that proposal now stand uh, in the light of um, this week's decision? Well, the first thing is that the um, I'm a passionate uh, advocate for the, um, uh, the use of the building as a music school, because it seems to me that it brings all of the cultural life um, and cultural importance into this very important civic building. So I'm an absolute advocate of it. But that said, I'd be the last person to say that we have a monopoly on good ideas. So there might be other ideas. Where we are now is we've got a consent, a planning consent, which lasts through to 2023, but we have no contractual rights over the building at all. Um, we merely have uh, a scheme which is proven to work in planning terms. Now, um, uh, we will obviously be uh, campaigning hard um, to convince people um, that it is the right use for this very important building. But ultimately that decision comes down to the council and um, to our local politicians. Um, and that has to happen in as transparent a way as possible, clearly, because what went wrong uh, between 2009 and 2015 was so much happened behind closed doors um, with no bad intention, but it meant that the shock of when these plans were revealed in 2015 um, was all the greater, but also the momentum towards a plan, which I think a huge number of people felt was wrong, um, had grown to an extent that it was very difficult to head it off. So now what we need is a very clear step-by-step -step decision-making process against all the knowledge we've now got, which can lead us to a, a viable and uh, deliverable future for this building. So could you give us any idea of a time scale of what you think might happen next? No, I mean, I think, I mean, practically, there's obviously, there's, um, I, I suspect as of this moment, the building is still under contract 
um, to the hotel developer. Now, in theory, that contract, I believe, runs until 2022. But what we understand um, is that now there is no active planning application in place because the decision of ministers is the final hurdle. Um, the council is free to withdraw from that contract on a unilateral break basis. Um, I suppose theoretically they could agree to continue uh, the contract and allow the hotel developer to put in another application, but it'd be a very odd decision because the one thing the hotel developers made very clear is that they've paired it back to the minimum viable size they could. And the other thing we know clearly from the report is that building a significant building on the Western playground is simply not possible. So it would be a very odd decision to continue the current, um, the, 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 the current contract. Once they're clear of that contract, though, there's an incredibly important decision has to be made. And how's, that's how do you take this forward? And the choice is obviously, you know, we offer a, want of a better phrase, an oven ready solution. I mean, we're ready to go. We've got the money. We've got the key consents. But equally, the council and local politicians will have to be very aware that that needs to be done with um, public support. So um, we're very open to, you know, whatever process of scrutiny there is. And, you know, bluntly, if someone comes up with a better idea which they can deliver and they can produce the funding for, I think we'd all welcome it. What we all want is the best possible, most suitable deliverable use for this building to arrest its decline and bring it back into the heart of our civic life. And does the consent include a listed building consent or is it just a planning consent? It includes the listed building consent. That's now lapsed. Um, the, rather, um, because of the presence of the, contra the hotel contract, the planning consent uh, was unusually uh, given a life of seven years. The listed building consent um, uh, would need to would need to be revived. But that's, I suspect, what we do. We obviously were under enormous time pressure to get the consent, uh, uh, the application um, lodged prior to a decision about the uh, first hotel scheme. I suspect we'd want to go back and you know think carefully about whether there's ways we can improve the. the and and I guess it's kind of part of that in, in that kind of process kind of really is the you know the fact that we've had this public inquiry and the building has has this wealth of detailed knowledge and information as to what is possible, what isn't possible, that will actually help Absolutely. the next iteration of that kind of process as well. So it isn't it isn't lost um, knowledge, it's actually gained knowledge. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Our design team and um, and you know the, the, the people who have supported us certainly again don't have the monopoly on good ideas. If we can make this the best possible answer for the building, then you know we're absolutely open to this. It's a very very long process going from a consent to um, uh, starting work. Um, you know, you've got the whole process of getting building warrants, and there's a lot of careful design work that would go into that. Um, a lot of the engineering side of things, which I know came out in the uh, very uh, importantly in the in the in the inquiry, need to be considered very very carefully. Uh, there's the whole procurement process. So, you know, I don't think anyone should be under any illusions that anything is going to happen immediately. But what they should be aware of is that um, we and our backers are wholeheartedly behind what, what, what we're proposing and, uh, you know, really looking forward to taking it on in, in as clear and a professional manner as we can. Uh, and the, the longer term means what we should think perhaps two, three years, would it be? As yeah, I mean, just, just, you know, I'm afraid, you know, it's something of this complexity does take a lot of time. I, I, there's clearly that, as we talked about, there's the political issue about um, a, a, the council getting into a new contract with this building. Um, last time, it took them between, goodness, uh, 2009 and 2013 to, to achieve that. Now, I hopefully that it will be much, much quicker this time. Um, but I think, and I think any decision like that has to be quite, quite sort of focused and, and intense, condensed. Um, and hopefully there's the political will to do that. Thereafter, you know, the whole, we're, we're intending to start our uh, developing our plans immediately. And we're prepared to take that, you know, that, uh, the, the, the cost risk on that. 
um, so that we could start as soon as possible. But procurement would take at least six months, for example, once, once you had a, a firm decision. So it's very unlikely you'd see any work within a year. And frankly, it's probably rather more than that. And that would be assuming you know, a very clear and very quick set of decisions. And um, so, so yeah, we're talking then probably a couple of years before anything materially would happen on the ground. And of course, that also straddles the period of the local government elections, which, which could be a wild card in this. But hopefully, well, yeah. the one thing I think, I mean, I, I do think one thing I could, we can be very proud of the fact that we've had absolutely. I think there was a pretty unanimous. Uh, unilateral political view on this. This has been very unpolitical. It's been about a sense of, um, you know, um, a genuine public sense of what uh, unhappiness across all political parties yeah. about the way this has gone. And I think it's very and, important we maintain that this isn't a party political. And I think it's worth just re reminding ourselves as well as is, is the the public inquiry resulted from the local authority. The planning authority refusing um, planning listed building consent twice, yeah. um, and what our role in terms of the Coburn and, um, and its coalition partners, and, and your role too, Willie, with the Royal High School Preservation Trust, in going to the inquiry was to support the decision made by the local authority. Yeah. So, yeah. so there is a there is a positive um, kind of will amongst not only. Uh, local community organisations, but local and national heritage organisations to find a kind of solution for this going forward too. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't agree more with that. I couldn't agree more. And that isn't to say that there won't be people who have different ideas about what the building should, should become, but we have to make that decision soon. And we have to make it in, a, in the best possible spirit. Um, and, you know, with a real sense of, 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 of doing something worthy for this hugely important part of Scotland's heritage. So, so just summing this up then, that there, there'll be some discussions, hopefully between yourselves and the, the City Council, once the issue of the existing contract with the, the developer is, is clarified. And then there'd be what, some period of public consultation uh, as uh, and a chance to comment on proposals and those proposals would have been themselves designed to take account of the, the, the very many points made in, in the inquiry report. But the, the citizens would have a chance to, to, to have the say um, in the early stages and be kept informed throughout. Is that a fair summary? Um, I mean, what I, I, this really is council business now. It's, 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 the, it's the building belongs to them um, on the assumption that uh, they have free control over it again, assuming that the, the, the contract is rescinded. Um, then they will need to make appropriate executive and um, political decisions about that. And I think, <coughs> I mean, our political representatives uh, will be the ones who decide on the various um, committees which have a role in that on the council so i think that at this stage we probably have to accept that that will be the um uh, the forum for the decision about how things are taken forward but clearly local politicians will be guided by the opinion of our constituencies the constituents and um and i think you know it's time now that um you know we all come forward with our positive ideas you know there's been a lot of hard campaigning against something let's 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 turn that energy into something positive and and really so that we can all come behind the, the best possible idea whatever that may be yeah and, and lastly um and almost flipping that i mean despite despite that uh, spirit of goodwill um there, there was a little bit of negative comment um i saw on social media uh which was along the lines that music school is a sort of exclusive elitist organization and that um, the, the public basically would be kept at arm's length from, from uh, the, the, the school if it, that was the, the eventual outcome. Uh, how would you respond to those criticisms? Well, I mean, I think the most important thing to say is that um, the school is open to anyone who has the talent um, and uh, the, if its entry is by audition. And it's a place which, I mean, some of the performances I've enjoyed there most have been of, uh, you know, there's some um, wonderful family of children who've come from, come, come from uh, the 
Western Highlands who, uh, with traditional music, which is just taking it to a new level. It's been a brilliant accordion. This has been one of the stars of the school in recent years. Um, this isn't a sort of, you know, this isn't something that is uh, uh, elitist, middle class. It's genuinely trying to bring on uh, the talents from across Scotland. And I think the great thing about this building um, is it allows it, it's clearly a building of significance to Scotland. It's not a local building, this is a national building. And I think by actually making, uh, putting a national music school into that forum merely enhances that, um, that sense. And, you know, I think there's five music schools in, in England, I mean, national music schools in England, surely we deserve one. And this, this is how the school can really and take its deserved place. I think the other thing, of course, is that it allows the school to become very much a focus of excellence. We're all getting, well, this is an example of it. We're all get, getting much better at sort of digital outreach and providing, and the school becoming a center of excellence uh, for musical education across the country is incredibly important. And, and if I can kind of add to that as well, just to note, it was quite interesting because there's been a bit of debate on social media around you know, whether it's a public building or not a public building and what that means in, in context. And um, it is interesting to note that the conservation plan that was produced for the proposal to turn it into a national photographic centre mm. um, made the point get very clear that um, its, its essence is as a civic building of the highest order. And as a school, of course, people never did gain have open access to it anyway but it was seen by the people of Edinburgh and still is seen by the people of Edinburgh as being a, a, a civic building of great of great significance to the kind of city um, so in effect I think what we're saying that a music school can continuing that tradition of being being a, a place of education and learning remains and it would, 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 would keep that kind of building in the heart of, of civic interest. Well, I think we've all got an interest in the, uh, in the talent of these exceptional, exceptional pupils who uh, would be able to use it and, and nurturing their talent. And I always see the building, you know, in its position as something of a beacon for an enlightened Scotland, an outward looking Scotland, I mean, a Scotland which is confident um, about uh, the abilities of its people and to me, you know, that was always what felt wrong about the about the hotel was it was something that was exclusive and sort of, you know, it was a it was almost treating the building as a viewing platform for an elite. That's not what this is. This is this is about us actually putting our best people in the place which we can all look up to and say this is what we should be aspiring to. It's a very physical symbol, this building on a hill, which has always been a physical symbol of how Scotland has viewed itself. So the sort of enduring organic and a statement for 21st century Scotland. I think that's right. And it's about confidence and it's about confidence in our abilities and our place in the world. And that's what the Royal High School was always about. You know, it was about taking, taking children from all walks of life. Again, you know, no matter what their background, you got the best education so that you could make the best of yourself. And I think that's profoundly democratic. Uh, approach to it and turning it into you know isn't it better isn't it better to turn the building into an engine for future talent than either a viewing platform or even actually something that's merely looking backwards on the glories of our past let's make this an engine house for our future okay thanks very much indeed i'll hand back to terry to just wrap up uh, yes, thank, thank you kind of very much and, and thank you very much kind of Willie for that. I, I think that that's a, a, a really kind of, kind of poignant message to kind of, kind, of, kind of leave this. Clearly there's a lot of grounds to be trod to get to a final solution, um, whatever that will kind of be as you say, but uh, uh, the kind of decision that was kind of reached, I think today liberates the opportunity for that going forward. And uh, it's kind of worth noting that Coburn certainly supported the music school's application and supported the applications. And I think we look forward to seeing what comes next um, and good luck to all parties in, in achieving that. Thank you.